All right, welcome. Welcome to Speak for Yourself from the Crib, presented by Hyundai. Jason Whitlock, no Marcellus Wiley today. He and his wife are expecting their new child today. Olivia, spelled with an A, will be joining us here at some point today. We wish Marcellus and Anna Marie good luck today. And we welcome Olivia to this new world we have here. All right, we got a great show planned for you today. Mark Schlereth, LeVar Arrington, and Bucky Brooks will join us as we talk some more football. But we're going to start today a little different. Uh, Darnell, Darnell Smith, uh, told me yesterday that he got an email from, uh, not an email, uh, email, a DM from Lil Wayne uh, yesterday, talking about yesterday's show. He loved yesterday's show, but he was imploring me to bring back the Whitlog. And so that's a little bit tough because we're doing it from the crib. There's no teleprompter here. And generally speaking, when I do my wit logs, I do them from a prompter because, again, I like to touch on uh, topics that a lot of people won't. And I like to be very precise with my words. Tough to do that without a teleprompter. I've got some notes here today. Uh, that I'm going to use, Little Wayne, uh, to get through my Whitlaw. But mostly I'm going to be speaking off the cuff and ad-libbing this Whitlaw. And I'm going to try to engage you all in a conversation about what life is going to be like for the sports world after the coronavirus pandemic. Whenever we get through this pandemic, through this crisis, I want to talk about what the sports world is going to be like in the aftermath. And I gotta be honest with you, I think it's gonna be a net positive. I think the sports world is going to be better in the aftermath of the coronavirus than the sports world we had beforehand. And I say that because, and I'm sure you're asking, why would I say that? I say that because American sports have uh, traditionally been a celebration of America and Americana. I think a lot of people think wrongly that sports are uh, are more of a diversion from reality and from the real world. We use this entertainment to escape the real news. I disagree with that. I think we've used sports to celebrate America and to push America forward. And I think we've kind of gotten away from that for the obvious reasons. People have turned sports into this place where we do a lot of protest. And I I think that's not been the proper role for sports over the last few years. But I want to walk you through some of America's past as it relates to sports, just to give you a little con- uh, context and foundation for what I'm trying to explain to you about how sports have been a celebration of American values, American culture, and sports have been used to push America to a better place. Of course, America's past is imperfect. The sports world's imperfect. We're all imperfect. And so I don't want to hear people when I start telling these stories from the past, or, oh, but X, Y, and Z was going on, and oh, they had segregation then, and they had this. Sports were a tool to push America forward. Sports used as a tool to celebrate American values, to to inspire us as Americans to live up to the values expressed in our Constitution. That has been the traditional role of sports. And so I'm going to take you all the way back to the 1930s and start there with Jesse Owens. It's an obvious story. We all know it. Jesse Owens in 1936 goes to the Berlin Olympics in Berlin, Germany, Adolf Hitler country. Jesse Owens, an African-American, goes to Berlin, Germany, four gold medals, 100, 200, long jump, four by 100 relay, becomes the biggest sports star globally, becomes a celebrated figure in America. Were things perfect or were things ideal or were things right for Jesse Owens when he returned to America and for African-Americans at that time? 
hell no. But was Jesse Owens' victory and, and triumph, an amazing performance at the 1936 Olympics, was that not something that moved black people forward and opened American eyes to the potential of the American black man and the black race right here in America? Let's stay right there in the 1930s with Joe Lewis, the heavyweight prize fighter. Joe Lewis's bouts in 1936 and 1938 with Max Schmeling, the German boxer. Huge impact on American culture, huge impact globally. Joe Lewis lost the first fight, a 12-round knockout. He lost to Max Schmeling. He comes back two years later, knocks Max Schmeling out in round one. We celebrate that here in America like it's the biggest thing in the world. It didn't matter whether you were black, white, fat, skinny, rich, poor, whatever. Joe Lewis's victory was an American victory and a victory of good over evil in terms of what Germany represented and what America represented. Were we living up to all of our ideals? No. But did Joe Lewis and Jesse Owens and what they accomplished in their arena, in the sports world, did that start the process of opening America's eyes to the full potential of African-Americans and what America was denying itself by, den by denying African-Americans their full rights? Absolutely, it started there. It started with Joe Lewis and Jesse Owens, and it started in the sports world, and it started in the 1930s and carried over into the 1940s when Jackie Robinson breaks the color barrier in Major League Baseball. <laughs> this, from Jackie Robinson to Jesse Owens to Joe Lewis, these events in the sports world had incredible impact on America. Everybody knows Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier in 1947 inspired the civil rights movement that came to America and to the South in the 1950s and 60s. It starts in the sports world. The sports world has been a celebration and an inspiration for America traditionally. We have moved too far away from that. And that's where I think we're headed back to. I think we're headed back to a place where we can celebrate sports again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you why, because again, I think our enemies, American enemies, understand the importance of sports in America. They understand its cultural influence on America. And so if you're a communist country, if you're China per se, you want to see upheaval, discontent. You don't want to see a celebration of American values in sports. You want to see sports as a platform to smear and denigrate America. And that's why I think we've gotten carried away in the last five to seven years, in the last decade. And listen, everybody knows what I'm talking about, from Colin Kaepernick uh, making the national anthem a polarizing event. Here we have football, which is clearly the most dominant thing in American pop culture. The number one television show on five different tele uh, TV networks. A hundred million people watch the Super Bowl. And the national anthem, given our history in sports, the national anthem now becomes a polarizing event. Look, <laughs> it's a mistake. It's not the path to progress to turn sports into this polarizing political vehicle of discontent and complaint. That is not, listen, I am not for someone for not voicing my concerns and pushing America to a better place. But do you do it in the pregame national anthem? If someone can show me footage of Muhammad Ali before a boxing match, during the national anthem, complaining about America, if somebody can show me that, then I'll buy it. I don't think it's the proper deal. I think from Colin Kaepernick to LeBron James to Megan Rapino to countless other athletes, many of them with connections to Nike, and Nike's connections to China, I think we're now starting to understand, and this is where I think the coronavirus is going to be a net positive for us, 
We have started a conversation in America looking at this coronavirus, where it came from, how China handled it. You go all the way back to October when Daryl Morey sparked the controversy, the Houston Rockets general manager sparked the controversy in the NBA about China when he tweeted out support for the protesters in Hong Kong. This started in October, this educational process about foreign influence over American culture and China, a communist regime. I think there's a lot of people in my generation and younger that don't have an understanding of communism. They don't have an understanding of the dangers of communism. I don't think they understand how much influence and how a communist regime as a strategy tries to smear America along racial lines. I don't think we have a full understanding of what has really been the puppet strings behind these athletes that seem so passionate about complaining about America from a sports platform. Who's really pulling those strings? And the thing that happened with Daryl Morey in the NBA started to, the educational process of America starting to realize, oh my God, these puppet strings are actually being pulled out of China. Nike, the NBA, NBA players, so dependent upon China and the money that they're able to make in China. The NBA trying to get a huge contract out of China. Perhaps these athletes are doing these things to curry favor in China. This educational process through the coronavirus now coming in, in March and, and going will go on through this summer, I think people are going to start to understand that we're on the brink of a cold war with China. We're on the brink of China becoming the new Soviet Union, a communist threat, and our rival. And I think it's going to be healthy for us as Americans. You need a rival. Larry Bird needed Magic Johnson. Tom Brady needed Peyton Manning. Muhammad Ali needed Joe Frazier. America needs a rival to help us understand who we are and why we should take pride in American values and in America, in, in our country. That's where I think we're going to be at on the other side of this coronavirus. It will be fashionable again and okay and cool to show pride in our country. I think this is going to be a great educational tool for us, and I think it's going to be great for football. Look, everybody that watches this show knows I love football. I credit football for where I am today, but I also credit America for where I am today. And that's why it bothers me so much. And again, I understand the criticism of America. I understand our past. But I also know Jason Whitlock in this current form, living where I'm living at right now, providing for my family the way that I do, the thing, it couldn't happen in these other countries only in America. That's why Don King said it. You can't be a chubby little kid from the inner city in Indianapolis, mama a factory worker, daddy a high school dropout, in the hood. When my parents divorced, my mother moved me and my brother to a little 600 square foot apartment in the hood, factory worker. When I was a senior in high school, me and my father shared a one bedroom, 500 square foot apartment in the hood. You can't come from there and then 50 years later end up here only in America and so I think when we get to this other side of the coronavirus when this educational process about hey how much foreign influence is pervasive throughout our culture and throughout sports culture with all these leagues and their foreign ties and this is why I love football and the NFL, it's a unique sport that's unique to America. We play it better than everybody. We're the only one with the balls to play it. <laughs> when this is over, masculinity and football will be back in style. This whole little thing we've been on for the past decade where men have become luxuries instead of necessities, I think will be over because of this coronavirus. Football will be back in style. America will be back in style. Showing pride in America will be back in style. And we will frown upon the people that don't respect this country. And again, you can be a critic of this country and respect it. 
But damn it, all this turning the national anthem and turning these sports platforms into places where we're, we're protesting the police, that has to end. It's over. That's what I think the coronavirus will do. You got a problem with the police? Go to the damn police department. Let's don't hash it out right before kickoff of a football game. Sports, football, bring us together, celebrate our best values, put America in the proper spotlight, and inspire us to do better. They, that's what they've done traditionally. All these people whining and complaining, and these damn elites, these elite millionaire genetically gifted athletes that want to complain and pretend like they know the struggle, get out of here. Get out. There's a bunch of us that know the struggle that weren't born six foot nine and could jump out of a building. Some of us had to actually put in all kinds of work to get here. And I'm not saying you didn't athletically. But some of us had to use this up here. And this up here tells me we've been out of line for the past decade. We've gone too far and have turned the sports world into something that's not intended to be. We will get back to celebrating America and sports will return to what it has been for many, many years, a great spring springboard and inspiration for American citizens. All right, when we come back, LeVar Arrington's going to join the program. We're going to talk some more Cam Newton. Speak for Yourself, presented by Hyundai. I'm Jason Whitlock. More after this. Muscle pain? I'm talking stop in your tracks. I'll never work out again. Oh, my God, what am I going to do kind of pain? This is the kind of pain Dr. Jason Wurzlin was in when he created Theragun the deep muscle massager that's unlike anything you've ever felt. Theragun isn't a cheap massager that just tickles your muscles. Our handheld percussive device uses a scientifically calibrated combination of speed, depth, and power to release the deepest muscle tension. It's this simple. Whether you want to treat your muscle tension from working out, an injury, or just everyday life, you can use Theragun. Theragun is the preferred muscle recovery device for over 250 professional sports teams and is used by hundreds of thousands of satisfied customers around the world to reduce pain, increase range of motion, and soothe aching muscles. Try Theragun risk-free for 30 days or your money back by going to theragun.com slash cadence. For a limited time, listeners who speak for yourself get a free charging stand with the purchase, a $79 value. That's theragun.com slash cadence. That's T-H-E-R-A-G-U-N dot com slash cadence. C-A-D-E-N-C-E. All right, welcome back to Speak for Yourself from the Crib, presented by Hyundai. All right, time now for a big story, sponsored by KFC. Feed the whole family with KFC's $25, $20 fill-up <laughs> and all the fixings. All right, you can go online at kfc.com and get your $20 fill up. All right, time now for a big story. Uh, and to be joined by LeVar Arrington from the crib. LeVar, uh, good to have you. Let's go straight to Cam Newton, who posted on Instagram, topless, shirtless, uh, that, you know, he's back hard at work. He's showing his workout the whole nine and, you know, seems to be very motivated right now. Uh, I don't think the actual Instagram post is actually a good look. Uh, I think Cam thinks it's about his body. I think it's about his head. And so I, I would love a more thoughtful Cam than a jacked up. And may, Maybe this is just jealous because I've got a keg and he's got a 12 pack. I, I, I don't know. Mm. Maybe I'm just jealous. But Lamar, mm. I'm not sure if the Instagram post, I don't think it's a good look. I love it. I love it. And and just listening to the great rant you just gave addressing the state of the union, this is Cam yeah. Newton addressing his state of his union, right? His fan base. It's like Rocky before he went and fought Ivan Drago or before he fought Clubber Lang the second time. You talked about Joe Lewis making things work and making things exciting for us as sports fans. That's all Cam is doing right now is drawing from those type of thought processes. He's showing that as an as an underdog, like Cam Newton now today in 2020 is an underdog. He's showing that it's it's the work. And I think that 
if you want to draw the conclusion that there's mental and there's physical, that's that's the conclusion I would come to seeing him listening to the gospel music, doing his workouts and saying he's pushing through the shade to still shine. Love the gospel music, obviously. And LeVar, if, if Cam Newton were an outside linebacker, take your shirt off, flex, do all of that, blah, blah, do all of it. I would love it. And it would be, oh, man, he's in the gym pumping that iron. He fitting to wreck havoc on the NFL. The problem is he plays quarterback. And the days of Cam running through the defensive jungle, unhurt, untamed, running wild, those days are over. It's not about the physical for Cam. It's about the mental. Hell, he'd have damn near been better off with, with, with a drink and a cigar and telling me, you know, and by the way, uh, cheers to you. I'm having some Casa Dragonas during this show. But, Ain't nothing wrong, uh, wrong with it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. But I, I'm, I'm serious. He'd be better off calmly telling me his thought process and how he's going to get better. I'm more interested in Cam between the ears than pumping iron. You know what, though? I think that the mental aspect of this is to be the person that you have been. And you want to grow mentally, but to change who he is, the essence of who he is in this moment, is done, where he LeVar. finds himself, uh, whether they are done or not, which I'm not going to disagree with you on that, but imagine if they're not. Imagine if he shows these videos and says he's working and he's getting it right, and some way, somehow, he shows us next season that he's the guy. That is the very essence of what you just said post-coronavirus is going to represent to us as Americans. That is American, Jason Whitlock. For him to make it a great comeback story, that's American. And you know what he needs to do, LeVar? Because I'm going to tell you what he's doing. He's sitting around thinking about Lamar Jackson winning the MVP, and he doesn't realize... The Lamar Jackson days are over for Cam Newton. Go watch Tom Brady sit in the pocket, get rid of the football <laughs> on time, go, go read a defense, those things. That, that's the problem. He's got Lamar envy. And I don't blame him. Everybody would love to be young again and be able to run a 4-3-40 and be able to run through the, the Lavar Arringtons of the world and the Ray Lewis's of the world. But those not days are happen. over for Cam, and that's why I don't think this IG post is a great look. You know what? When I Honestly, if you look up Tom Brady, they have him running the 40 and saying he's doing workout videos. He opened up a workout facility, TB12, workout shirt facility, on. shots out to Tom. Yeah, but he don't look like Cam Newton with his shirt off. <laughs> there ain't too many dudes that look like Cam Newton with their shirt off. With. So at the end of the day, you know – it I is know, what it is. It could be body envy. It sounds like a little body envy, but at the end of the day, we're going to find out. That's the <laughs> beauty of sports. We're going to find out if the look still matches the game. All right, let's move on. Cam also put out a little video uh, where he seems to be pretty salty at the Carolina Panthers. Uh, the Carolina Panthers gave up on Cam, and that seems to be inspiring him. Uh, should Cam be upset with the Panthers for giving up on him? Uh, I mean, I don't think they gave up on him. I think they had to make a, a business decision. And your business decision is, do we keep Cam Newton and see if we can make it through the season, or do we go in a different direction and they made their their deal. One thing I've learned for certain, being a uh, former NFL player and professional, is it's never personal. It's just business. And and in that moment, whatever he has to do to keep him motivated and working and getting stronger and preparing with, it, it's still just business at the end of the day. They don't owe him any more than what he owes them, which is really absolutely nothing. All right. So in the end, when they made their decision as to what direction they were going to go in and basing it off of the information that they had, 
you can't look at it as they gave up on him. Man. You looked at it as maybe it just was time to move on. Well, listen, I, I don't think he should be upset with the Panthers, but I do think he has a right to believe they gave up on him because that is exactly what they did. They don't think he's going to get over his injuries. They clearly don't think he's in the right mind, and they've moved on. So, you know, if that helps motivate Cam, that's actually part of the thing I like beyond the gospel music. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I think he's in the right state of mind. The Carolina Panthers definitely gave up on him. All right, LeVar, before we let you go, I yep. do want to give you a chance, and I'm, I'm going to give everybody a chance today. How do you think the sports world will be different post the coronavirus? I think America is built on being the underdog and overcoming. And I don't think that that mentality and that thought process and belief will ever change. I really don't. I'm an All-American and I take pride in being an All-American because of what that represents to the fabric and the culture of America. All-American meaning that I overcome all odds to be the best at what it is that I do. That's a mentality that I've learned since being being a little kid. And that's something that I will never cease to believe in, that our culture, our, our, our world as we know it as Americans, we always overcome. No matter how bad it gets, we're going to always overcome. So I think post-coronavirus, we'll find a way to adapt and adjust just like we always have because that's what we do as Americans. All right, thank you, LeVar. All right, thank stick around. You, sir. For yourself, presented by Hyundai. Mark Slayer is going to join us, and we're going to talk about Bill Belichick and whether he has anything to prove post-Tom Brady. Right. Look around you. It's a wireless world, and everyone needs a great pair of wireless earbuds. But before you go dropping hundreds of dollars on a pair, you need to check out the wireless earbuds from Raycon. You already know Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market and that they sound just as amazing as other top audio brands you know. And Raycon's latest model, E25, is their best one yet with six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass and more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. Raycon's wireless earbuds are so comfortable and perfect for on-the-go listening and for taking phone calls. Raycon was co-founded by Ray J and celebrities like Snoop Dogg and J.R. Smith are obsessed with the brand. Pick up a pair and see what the hype is all about. Now's the time to get the latest and greatest from Raycon. Get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com speak. That's buyraycon.com speak for 15% off Raycon wireless earbuds. By Raycon.com slash speak. Welcome back to Speak for Yourself from the Crib, presented by Hyundai. All right, Jason Whitlock, no Marcellus Wiley today. He and Anna Maria are bringing a baby girl into the world today. Look forward to that. All right, joining us now, Mark Schlereth. Let's go out to his crib in Denver. Mark, welcome to the show. Let's get right to it. Uh, there was an interesting article today uh, about Bill Belichick and what he has to prove post-Tom Brady. And I read the article, and I was like, Bill Belichick has nothing to prove post-Tom Brady, post-Ty Law, post-Richard Seymour, post-Romeo Cornell, post-Charlie Weiss. Does Bill Belichick have anything to prove, Mark? Oh, I think he certainly has something to prove. Prove to himself that you can win multiple championships without Tom Brady as your quarterback. You know, I say this all the time, Jason. You think the Eagles are big downstairs in the locker room? Walk upstairs to the coaches' offices. They want to prove it's them. They want to prove that they are, like, the reason that you want one. And I understand that Bill Belichick knows it's about his players to some degree, but I don't think there's any question that he would like to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that he is the greatest coach in any sport of all time. And you know how you do that? You know how you set yourself apart? You win another championship with some guy named Stidham or some guy named Andy Dalton, and you walk away with it uh, on those terms, then it's not about Brady and Belichick. It's about Belichick being the greatest coach of all time. And I'm not just talking about in the NFL. I'm talking about in sports in general. Mm, I think that's a high bar to climb in terms. I don't know if he can ever, in my mind, 
get ahead of the hockey uh, coach, Scotty Bowman. But I hear mm-hmm. you. But but I just think, to me, Bill Belichick sits in his office today and says, I made Tom Brady what he is. I, d- I don't think Bill Belichick has one doubt in his mind that he's proven everything there is to be proven as an NFL coach. Now, if he wants to go join the NBA and coach there and, be, and, and show he can do it in another sport, that's a way he can improve on his legacy. He, there's nothing for him to do in the NFL to prove a damn thing. No, I agree with that. You didn't have to prove anything. You didn't have to prove anything to me. But I think when you're an ultimate competitor, and he's an ultimate competitor, you're proving to yourself that, hey, it's not just about me and Tom Brady together. I can win championships with other guys, my coaching style and what I do to develop players. That's the difference. And so those guys compete. The most amazing thing about Tom Brady, the most amazing thing about Bill Belichick is neither of those guys over the course of their career have been sated by success. You know how hard that is once you've had success and once you have the money and once you have the um, adulation of the fans to not be satisfied by that, but to still be driven And you have to be one of the great competitors there are on the face of the planet to be driven like that. He is one of those guys. And I don't think there's any question that he wants to prove that he can do it without Tom Brady. I I just think that's human nature for a great coach like that. I think there was a third name you could have added to that list. Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, Jason Whitlock. I've never been satisfied by success, and I've had nothing but success my whole life. Never been satisfied. So, uh, listen, I understand... You're one of these nut jobs like Eric Dickerson that has a problem uh, with the Rams' new logo. Please tell me that's not true. You, you don't have a problem with this new logo, do you? Uh, that, that new logo is nothing but ugly. It looks like some local news station's morning cup of Joe show is what that looks like. You know, here I, you know I have my own business, right? I'm a businessman. I've got a gourmet line of green chili. When we started it 12 years ago, we didn't have any money. So we designed our own labels. We designed our own logos. We did all that stuff, right? And um, once we had some money, we went and got a professional designer to actually um, uplift our logos and to actually make it more appealing to the consumer. And that, to me, was a big difference in what we did. The Rams, to me, had the professional logo done from the 40s, 50s, or 60s, or whatever it was. And then they let their eight-year-old daughter draw these uh, renditions and put them out there in, in circulation. That, that is just, I mean, did, did you guys hire a professional to do this? Or, or is that, yeah, we're having our morning cup of joe. This is embarrassing. No, let me tell you what's going on here, Mark. You, like okay. Eric Dickerson and everybody else, you got cabin fever, you got nothing to do, and so the Rams gave you something to complain about. Oh, they put out a, a new logo, and let me complain about this. If the world were normal right now and we were able to come and go as we please and you were out in your garden all day working instead of sitting in your house worried worried about nothing and wondering what you're going to do, you wouldn't be complaining about this new logo. You'd look at it and say, ah, it's, it's not the best I've ever seen, and you'd move on. Um, I disagree. I like I know what ugly looks like, regardless if I'm got cabin fever or if I don't have cabin fever. Um, that that is uh, that's closing time. And you better be you better be three sheets to the wind before you take that logo home. <laughs> All right. Let me ask you this. Uh, I started my show with my rant about how I think uh, the sports world is going to be different post the coronavirus. How do you think the sports world might be different once we get to the other side of this corona pandemic? Well, you know, it's interesting. And you mentioned football, and I was listening to you, and, and the, the role that football play, uh, plays in, in just our society in general. And I think it's a really interesting role because, you know, for, for so long now, this has been a sport that's been the lifeblood that courses through my veins, something that I just love with um, – all the passion that I have and our sport, the one we love has been under attack for a long time by people who hate our sport and our sport has an ability to bring people together. Sports in general has a, uh, an ability to bring communities together, to, to have this kind of um, attachment. And that's what I see sports doing in this country. It brings us together as people. It gives us 
um, lessons, valuable life lessons about sacrifice and what we would have to do. You know, it's funny. I was on this um, national prayer meeting today um, over Instagram and uh, was attached to Africa and to places all around the United States of America, um, praying for our country and praying for the first responders and praying for the medical workers. And one of the amazing things about what people are doing right now on the front lines um, is one of my favorite scriptures in John 15, 13, which says, um, you know, no greater love than this, someone who would lay down his life for a friend. And it's amazing to see what our country is doing and to have great championship success. You've got to be able to sacrifice to lay down your, you know, your fame, your, your, whatever accolades you want to achieve. You've got to be able to lay those down for your teammates. And that's what I see happening in this country right now. And I hope, um, you know, I hope good can come from all the disaster that's going on right now that we can come together as a country in general. And I think sports helps us to do that. So uh, that's what I think we have to look forward to when sports do come back um, and help connect us as communities once again. Thank you, Mark. Great job. You got it, my friend. All right, stick yeah. around. Bucky Brooks, he's going to join us from his crib. Speak for yourself from the crib or after this. Welcome back to Speak for Yourself from the Crib. Today's segment sponsored by ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. All right, is Dak Prescott, is he the smartest way for the Cowboys to win? All right, Bucky Brooks is going to join me in this conversation. Bucky, Ed Werder just tweeted out, let me read this verbatim, a source on the Cowboys negotiations with QB Dak Prescott wouldn't describe a contract resolution as close, but said discussions, not contentious, and Prescott will emerge as the highest paid NFL player. Wow. Is this the zip recruiter smartest way to win for the Dallas Cowboys, Bucky? It is the smartest way for the Dallas Cowboys to win because they need their QB1 in the fold. We can argue about whether the Cowboys should have did this deal a year or so ago when the turn is probably been a little more favorable, but it is what it is. They let him play last season. Last season, he had a good season based on the numbers. And even though some would contend that the wins weren't um, coming plentiful, I think he showed that he could put the offense on his back. He can make plays. He is more than just a game manager at the position. And I think at the end of the day, you have to pay a premium for that. The Dallas Cowboys realize that that's why they're having to pony up right now. Uh, listen, Dak looks like he's going to win the negotiations. But that, to me, that means the Cowboys are going to lose the war. They're going to have to overpay for Dak Prescott. Making Dak Prescott at any point in time, based off what we've seen, the highest paid player in the NFL. Bucky, you're one of the smartest people in football. You cannot tell me this is the smartest way to win. The dude went 8-8 eight and eight in a career year and didn't make the playoffs, but the smartest way to win is to make him the highest paid player in the NFL? Hey, you're taking a, a, a one-season snapshot about their success when it comes to team success. But if we really look at what he's been able to do in the four years he's been the Dallas Cowboys starting quarterback. Two of those seasons, he won the division title. Everyone wanted to see more heading into last season because they said his success was a byproduct of Ezekiel Elliott, the offensive line, and the defense. So he goes out there, plays at a high level as a passer. You're talking about a guy who really threw the ball all over the yard. And even though his number one receiver would kind of disappear in and out, he didn't necessarily have the best offensive line that he has had in terms of the way that they perform, he still played well enough to win. And I think Jerry Jones, the coaching staff, they understand what they have in Dak, not only the player, but in all the leadership qualities and intangibles. And because of that, they have to pay a premium. We can argue that all quarterbacks are overpaid, but it's Dak's turn to get paid. And because the Cowboys waited, they're now having to pay at a premium. Okay, Bucky, do this for me. Let's pretend it's your money. And you have a <laughs> choice between making Dak the highest paid player in the NFL 
or sticking the franchise tag on him and letting him go out there and prove it to you one more time that he's worth one of these $35, $36 million a year contracts. Buck, if it's your money, and those are your two options. I don't know how many guys are worth $35 plus million, but I'm going to put my money on Dak Prescott because the trust factor. I can trust Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott has not only been a solid player for us on the field, but he's been a model citizen. Solid. He's exemplified everything that you want from Solid. the franchise quarterback. Leadership, the way that he has been able to handle the things that have popped up with the Dallas Cowboys over the last four years. I trust that Dak Prescott is going to be a great worker. He's going to be a great performer. And he is going to do the things that we expect the QB1 to do. I believe that we will see Dak Prescott ascend, much like we saw Russell Wilson ascend when he got his opportunity to run the Seahawks as the unquestioned leader of the squad. All right, Bucky, you used to play for the Kansas City Chiefs. That's where we actually met. And so I would assume, based off of what you just are arguing for a solid NFL player, as you described him, uh, that Clark Hunt should just sign over the Kansas City Chiefs franchise to Patrick Mahomes based off of if a solid player is worth being the highest paid player in the league, certainly Patrick Mahomes should own a significant stake in the Kansas City Chiefs. Absolutely. Patrick Mahomes should should get paid. But let's make the argument just based off of Dak Prescott's draft classmates, Carson Wentz and Jerry Goff. When those contracts came in last year at $32, $33 million, when the Cowboys waited, you knew that when you add on inflation and the cost of doing business, the contract had to come in at about $35 million. I've been telling you that for a while. And now when you factor in the new TV money that is about to hit the salary cap and the way it's going to impact it, $35 plus million for a quarterback is going to look like chump change based on where we are now and where we will be in a year or two. All right, I'm going to move on. I just want to add quickly, you got about 40 seconds. I want you to tell me, does Kyle Allen, in your mind, really have a chance to be the starting quarterback in Washington over Dwayne Haskins? Yeah, this is something you need to keep an eye on. Kyle Allen is revered by the coaching staff there. You have to understand, Scott Turner is the offensive coordinator. He was the quarterback coach who found Kyle Allen as an undrafted player, took him from a practice squad player to a guy that was a short-term starter last season. Remember, there was conversation that Kyle Allen should be the starting quarterback of the Carolina Panthers when Cam Newton returns. And I'm not saying that Kyle Allen is a great player, but I'm saying that there's a comfort level with Kyle Allen, with Ron Rivera and Scott Turner. And if Dwayne Haskins is caught slipping, or if he's not able to get caught up at the speed with an abbreviated offseason, I would not be surprised to see Kyle Allen as the starting quarterback of the Washington Redskins, something that's going to take the football world by surprise. All right, Bucky, I want to get this in real quick. You're a high school football coach. How do you think the sports world will be different on the other side of the coronavirus pandemic? Uh, I think there'd be a greater appreciation for football. I think so many people lost their final seasons, particularly high school seniors in the spring, that there will be a greater respect and appreciation for being able to play team sports. Jason, you and I talk about football and so many life lessons that come from football. I think coaches will be able to stand in front of their team and talk to their players about appreciating the moment, appreciating being able to work with your brothers and being able to leave the world in a better place because of your contributions on this planet. I think football and sports will benefit from what we have learned from this virus and the fallout from it. Bucky, great job. Thank you very much. All right, don't go anywhere. We're going to go to Uncle Jimmy's crib. Can't wait to see what he's wearing today. We'll have uh, approval rating on the sports world. Next! Welcome back to Speak for Yourself from the Crib, presented by Hyundai. Cheers to you, America. Uncle Jimmy, Uncle Jimmy, uh, welcome to uh, Speak for Yourself from the Crib. Uh, you got a big dummy of the day. And Slaring, Bucky Brooks, and LeVar are candidates. 
<laughs> no, nah, bro, I'm going to be honest with you, man. Big dummy of the day go to the person that's sitting up there acting like they drinking water, but is actually drinking Casa de Onis. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm definitely drinking Casa de Onis. Ain't no acting to it. I need hey, a pop know- today. This cabin fever's got me. Uh, hey, we know what anyway, you in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, hey! I'm taking it very easy. Though. I got a workout to do after this. Was, but anyway... We're, we, I opened up the show talking about the sports world, how it's going to be different after coronavirus. You come yeah. on trolling me with this Kaepernick shirt on. Uh, do you have any thoughts about the sports world in the aftermath of the coronavirus? Well, I, I, I really appreciated your Whitlock and your little soliloquy. Um, but once again, I think you kind of missed it a little bit because you're talking about something you don't know. Um, it says in the good book that a man should not judge another man until he slept with his horse. Okay. (laughs) And if you haven't done that, I don't understand how we can go around and make these comparisons right now. Okay. Cause right now men and women, husbands, wives, boyfriends, and girlfriends, they're asked to do something that they've been, they've never been asked to do. They've been asked to live with someone that they think that they love. And this is a rough time for everybody, man. You know, right now, men are going crazy, man, because this beautiful blonde that they've loved for all these years is turning into a brunette right before their eyes simply because they can't get into a beauty shop. Right now, there's men right now, all over America at this very moment, there's men that are getting the definition of the joke that their friend said, hey, your daughter looks like a mailman. Nope. They said your daughter looks like the mailman. OK, when this is all over, the big winner is going to be divorce attorneys. When this is all over, a divorce attorney will be harder to find than a, a role. I got to go to my approval rate. Hey, man, this is hard. Time. I got the sports world, Jimmy. Uncle Jimmy, I got the sports world. At 85, GOAT status. The internet has him as, as a dumpster fire. All right, speak for yourself from the crib tomorrow. That's it, bro. You know.